The Sony 20mm f1.8G lens is perfectly specced for landscape astrophotography. It's nice and wide so you can capture a lot of the incredible night sky whilst still including some landscape foreground interest. And then the f1.8 aperture should let in lots of light which is important in astrophotography. But how does it compare to other lenses in this focal length? And what about its bigger, more expensive brother, the 24mm G Master? So I've been using the 24mm G Master for just over a year now and it very quickly became one of my favourite lenses of all time. So when Sony announced the 20mm G lens, I didn't hesitate to pre-order, but I did feel a little sceptical as to why it was only a G lens and not a G Master. But when the lens arrived, it had exactly the same design and build quality as the 24mm G Master. So you've got the same manual aperture ring, which goes in third stop clicks, or you can de-click for smooth aperture changes in video, or you can even put it into A mode so that you can control the aperture electronically via the camera rather than the ring. You also get the same AF MF switch, focus hole button, which you can customize. It is a focus by wire, but I've had no issues focusing on the stars. And in fact, it's almost snappy. It almost feels like it snaps into infinity perfectly. Like when you're focusing on a star, um, I don't know how to describe it, but you know in Photoshop when things like snap to the grid, it kind of feels like it just snaps into infinity. It's, I don't know, it's really interesting, but it's really cool. It has the same 67 millimeter filter thread as the 24 millimeter G Master. And it also has a bit of glass over the back opening so that dust and stuff doesn't get inside, which I think is pretty cool. Probably the only difference with the G Master is that the G has a black background instead of a red background. And there's one peculiar thing as well, which is that the, I don't know if you can hear that. Basically when it's not connected to the camera, I think it's the focus, the autofocus mechanism inside is a bit loose. When you connect to the camera and it has a, uh, electricity running through the lens, it, it doesn't do that. But when you take it off the camera, it's a bit loose, which uh, is not really a bad thing. I hope it doesn't mean that it's gonna break easily, but more of a, an observation. Now it's actually a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter than the 24mm G Master. It's considerably smaller. I was quite surprised at how much I could notice it when I sort of pulled it out of the box. And even when I'm pulling them out of my bag, I know which one it is because one is smaller than the other. Even though it doesn't look huge, it's enough that you notice. And I mean, the 20mm weighs just 363 grams. The 24mm weighs 445. So it's a really small, really lightweight lens. But there is also a price difference. The 24mm is about £1,350 and the 20mm is still going for about £900. There's a significant price difference as well. Now, when I review a lens, I like to compare it to the lenses that I've already used just so I have a benchmark to appreciate how good or how bad it is. Well, I'm going to be comparing it to the Tokina 20mm f2 Firin lens. I'm also going to be comparing it to the Samyang 20mm f1.8 lens. And there's probably a couple of others that I could have compared it to. Um, so I'm sure some of you might ask about the Sigma 20mm f1.4, which has a third stop advantage in aperture, but it's a big, heavy lens. And when I tested the Sigma 20mm art lens a couple of years ago, I just found that the, the center was incredibly sharp, even at f1.4. But the corners were always pretty soft and even when you step down to f2.8 uh, the stars in the corners still have astigmatism so the stars in the corners still have these really big wings which for me personally i i don't like i like my stars to be nice and round and pinpoint so i've never really owned the sigma art lens another popular lens in this focal range is the zeiss Batis 18mm f2.8 which performs really well for astrophotography even at f2.8 the stars in the corners are nice and round um, but when I compared that lens to the 16-35mm to G Master, it was exactly the same in performance. 
So I could never really justify that huge price tag for a prime lens that does something that a zoom lens does, which I already own. And I don't consider that lens to be in the same category as these fast wide angle lenses because it only opens up to f2.8. Me personally, I like to have lenses that open up to f1.4, f1.8, um, especially if I'm gonna be working in a dark environment. Now, when the Sony 20mm arrived, uh, we had just gone into lockdown. So I did some tests in my back garden, which is not too bad. I live in a bottle four, bottle five area, so it's not the end of the world. Um, but then as the lockdown restrictions started to lift, I took the lenses to my local hill and I did some more testing up there. And I just wanted to check that I got the same results that I did when I tested in my garden. Now, one of the first things I noticed from these tests was that the Sony was wider than the Samyang and the Tokina. The Samyang and the Tokina, very similar in focal length. The Sony was actually a little bit wider. So if I put this image on the screen now, this is the Tokina image and then switch into the Sony image in three, two, one. Now you can see that it's a little bit wider. And just to make it a little bit more clear, this is the Sony image. And I've put a red border on the image to show that the way the Tokina image fits in onto the Sony. So you can see that the Sony is a little bit wider. I ended up doing some measurements, uh, using a measuring tape, doing some tests, and working out that the the angular field of view of the Sony 20mm lens is actually closer to being 19mm, not 20mm. So make of that what you will. Then I went for a third night of testing because I found this row of trees very close to my house that was just the perfect scene to test a lens. So if we just look at the images. So I've got the Sony on the right and the Tokina is on the left. Both of these shots are at f2. And if we compare the sharpness in the center, you should see, hopefully the quality on YouTube is good enough, but you should see that the Sony is razor sharp. It's sharper than the Tokina, and the Tokina is no slouch. It's a really, really sharp lens, especially for the price. I was really surprised. But the Sony is really killing it here. And if we look at the edge of the frame, again, you can see that the Sony is, is still sharper. And you can also see that the Sony is a little bit brighter, even though they both are f2, both at exactly the same settings. The Sony is a little bit brighter. And that's because the vignette on the Tokina is really strong. And this is one of the biggest issues I had with the Tokina, especially when doing time lapse, is that it never really felt like an f2 lens. I, all of my single exposures were quite noisy. Um, and that's because the light transmission is not great. It doesn't feel like an f2 lens. It felt more like an f2.8 lens when I was shooting at f2. So I was really relieved to see that the Sony has better light transmission as well. And even at f1.8, uh, the Sony is way sharper than the Tokina at f2. And even when we stop down to f2.8, Similar story, the Sony is just razor sharp. I mean, the Tokina is not exactly not sharp, but um, the Sony is just absolutely insane. And then zoom in to the edge of the frame. Again, the Sony is still the clear winner. Really, it's so obviously sharper and resolving much more detail. Now, going back to F2 for both lenses and just looking at the stars in the corner, you can see both lenses doing incredibly well, but the astigmatism is a bit more present on the Tokina, especially these little stars here, these brighter stars. Um, there's a little sign of astigmatism on the Sony, but it's otherwise pretty damn good. Just going to check the other corner. And yeah, the Sony's definitely got smaller aberrations than the Tokina. I'm going to bring up an image where I've put the bright star Vega in the corner of the frame and I compared all of the apertures between the Sony and the Tokina. You can see that the Sony is doing much better. The Tokina has a lot of chromatic aberration, big purple fringing on the bright star there. And the astigmatism wings are much bigger than the Sony. The other thing you'll notice is that the Sony does show improvements as you stop down, but the Tokina doesn't really show much improvement, especially on that bright star when you stop down. And on the Sony, you will notice there's little wings on even the smaller stars at f1.8 and f2. But by the time you get to f2.2, 90% of the stars are fine. Those little astigmatism wings are gone. 
and I think f2.2 is a real sweet spot for the Sony 20 millimeter yes you can still see a bit of astigmatism going on in the bright star Vega but it's rare that you're gonna have a star that bright in the corner of your frame so it really really impressive result from the Sony and actually like way better than I was expecting after I found out it was a G lens and not a G master so that was a real relief now I'm gonna keep a long story short but the the Samyang lens um, it's very soft it doesn't perform great until you stop down to f 2.8 and because it's so similarly priced to the Tokina, which is a much better lens in every aspect, apart from the third stop advantage, um, I very quickly knocked the Samyang out of the race. The thing with Samyang lenses is that they normally offer a good, cheap alternative to other lenses, especially when it comes to astrophotography. But with the Tokina on the market, it just doesn't make sense to buy um, this lens. So I very quickly knocked it out of the race. But how does the Sony 20mm compare to its bigger, more expensive brother, the 24mm G Master? So this is both of the lenses at f1.8. And zooming into the centre of the frame, the 20mm is sharper than the 24mm, which is mind-blowing, because the 24mm it was just an incredibly sharp lens, but the 20mm is is definitely sharper which is insane and I don't use that term lightly because the 24mm has that focal length advantage it's slightly more zoomed in it should be able to resolve more detail and yet the Sony definitely looks sharper slightly more detailed if we come out to the edge of the frame I'd say that the 24mm has actually pipped the post there although it is really not much in it at all the Sony 24 definitely looks a little bit sharper there and on this edge of the frame both looking pretty much the same pretty much the same so the Sony's the 20 mil is winning in the center of the frame and the 24 mil seems to have a slight edge on the edge of the frames which I don't know why one's a G master and the other one's a G it's I don't know I don't know and you know if I stop down to f2.5 and we look at the center of the frame again it's the same story the 20 millimeter is a little bit sharper it's resolving finer detail and at the edge they're pretty much on par actually I think the 24 has got a slight edge but it's only a hair's difference really starting to question why there's such a big price difference between these two lenses the one thing I do worry that the 20mm is actually too sharp which is a really weird complaint to have but you can kind of see some weird artifacts and colors going on in between these branches and I mean the problem with sharpness is that you can't really unsharpen a lens in post-production I quite like to have a lens that's sharp but that I can add my own sharpening to in post-production the 20 mil is just it's ridiculously sharp like it's crazily sharp I'm kind of worried that there'll be occasions where there'll be quite a heavy halo on on sharp edges um, but the fact that my, my, my biggest complaint about this lens is that it's too sharp is uh, I think it says a lot so this here is a similar image to what I did with the Tokina earlier on. The 24mm on the bottom and the 20mm on the top. And all of the apertures compared. The bright star Vega in the corner of the frame. And on first glance you might think that the 20mm dominated here. That it's winning. That it's performing better in aberrations. Because you look at the 24 and that Vega looks a lot bigger. The aberrations look bigger compared to the 20mm. But you kind of have to consider that they're not the same focal length. The 24mm is a little bit zoomed in, so the star's going to be bigger in the frame, and the aberration it has a slight disadvantage in that sense. But the 24mm definitely showing more chromatic aberration, so more colour fringing, but it shows pretty good improvements as you stop down. And the one thing I will note is that the 24mm, I mean, even at 1.4, if you look at all of the smaller stars, they're all pretty much perfect, apart from that one bright star. But on the 20mm, even the smaller stars have astigmatism wings at f1.8 and f2. They're only really small. It's really, you know, real fine nitpicking. But when you get to f2.2 with the 20mm, the 
Most of the stars are looking pretty good. 90% of the stars are pretty good. Those little astigmatism wings have gone. There's a bit of aberration going on on the big star Vega, but again, it's just rare that you're going to have a star that big in the corner of the frame. Just to show you a 24mm f1.4, the stars in the corner, are, they're all perfect, they're all round. At f1.4, it's a crazy lens. So I was quite surprised to see that result of Vega showing such bad aberration because I very rarely see any sign of aberration when I'm using the 24mm. This is f1.4. Um, but with the 20 mil at f1.8 and f2, you can see some little astigmatism wings on the smaller stars. But again, I mean, <laughs> look how small the aberration is. It's really insane performance. I'm I'm shocked that this is a G and the others a G Master. I still think the 24 mil is a little bit better, but I was kind of expecting much worse performance from 20mm being a G lens that's really not the case one last thing as well is that obviously the 24mm f1.4 has a much better light transmission advantage so if I just show you a video now from the 20mm at f1.8 and then compare that to the 24mm at f1.4 you can see that for real time video footage the 24mm f1.4 just smokes the 20mm lens so that light transmission advantage does play into the stills side as well so your images will be cleaner crazy findings guys I mean if you ask me which of the two is better I would still say the 24mm is the best lens ever made for landscape astrophotography but if you ask me which one you should buy between the two I'd probably recommend the 20mm you're saving yourself a significant amount of money and more people will prefer the 20mm field of view compared to 24mm. I know a lot of people find 24mm quite tight and constricting. Personally, I love the 24mm focal length and the light transmission of this lens is insane. The performance at f1.4 is insane. But the 20mm is an absolute winner. I mean, these two lenses are landscape astrophotographer's dream come true if you ask me to design a perfect lens it would be this shortly followed by this they are incredible small lightweight they take filters you got full versatility with the aperture control you've got a focus hold button which you can customize to whatever you want AFMF switch I mean what more could you possibly ask for I really don't know what else to add. These are about as close to perfection as you will find. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please hit subscribe down below if you want more astrophotography related content. Let me know your thoughts on these two lenses. Do you own them? Have you tried them? What's your experience been like? Do you want one of these? Which one do you want? Let me know, get in the comments below. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.